Welcome. Today we're here to talk about RTX 64 2013, the first 64-bit version of RTX. Of course, we're going to continue to develop our separate RTX 32-bit version. So going forward, we're going to have both RTX and RTX 64 for all of the 64-bit platforms. In the next couple minutes, I'm going to go over a brief architecture as well as some of the high-level features of RTX 64. Here we have an architectural overview of RTX 64 2013. For those of you already familiar with RTX, you'll see nothing has really changed other than we're supporting Windows 64-bit over here. For those of you who are new to RTX, I'm just going to briefly overview this, and I know this is busy. So to just to summarize, RTX transforms Windows into a real-time operating system on multi-core architectures. And it does this by dedicating a set number of processors for Windows and then a set number of processors for real-time processing on RTX. And of course, RTX 64 supports up to 63 real-time processors on a 64-core system. So there's a lot going on here, but again, just transforming Windows, and in this case, 64-bit Windows, into a real-time operating system and having hard, dedicated, real-time processing running on these dedicated cores down below. In many markets, there's a growing momentum for using 64-bit platforms. At Interval Zero, we're seeing it in audio, medical, and also industrial automation. And why is that? Many markets want to take advantage of large RAM, larger hard drives. They also want to take advantage of 64-bit windows. And also, of course, they want to fully leverage the 64-bit architectures coming from both Intel and AMD. In some of our earlier tests with RTX 64, our customers saw up to 20% performance increase running the exact same hardware as their previously built 32-bit versions of RTX. So a lot of this is done from optimization, but really also it's coming from just taking advantage of the 64-bit architecture itself. They were very excited to see this because this points to the potential of even more processing power by utilizing even more cores and more memory. Now let's go over some of the high-level features of RTX 64. First of all, RTX 64 is source code compatible with RTX 32-bit. So to help you with this process, if you're migrating from our 32-bit product, we're providing you with a porting guide. So it'll have a lot of the details that you might need as you're making this move. Also, I should point out, if you're already using RTX for 32-bit, you can still use your Windows side application with very minimal rework. You simply will just rebuild those Windows side applications with the new libraries that, you, that we provide you with the RTX 64-bit product. RTX 64, secondly, supports from 2 to 64 cores. And what this means is you can have up to 63 real-time cores. So truly leveraging the multi-core architectures from Intel and AMD. For debugging, we support Visual Studio. And we have under RTX 64, file, function, address, as well as data breakpoints. And then you can fully do multi-thread and multi-process debugging within Visual Studio for all of your real-time as well as your non-real-time needs. Another big feature is RTX 64 has a new high-performance real-time TCP IP stack. So it's IPv4 and v6 compliant, and it has a lot of the major features that you may have previously been used to in our 32-bit product. So it's WinSock 2.0 compliant. We have raw sockets as well as Mac filtering. So a nice feature upgrade there for RTX 64. As far as support-wise, RTX 64 supports Windows 7 Service Pack 1. We plan on supporting Windows 8 in 2013. For Visual Studio, we currently support 2010, and we're going to plan on supporting Visual Studio 2012 in 2013. And because this is a new version, a completely new version for RTX, we have all new documentation. And the one piece I really want to point out, again, for existing RTX customers, is we have a porting guide to help you migrate your applications from RTX to RTX 64. And also, in following with the different editions, this follows our 32-bit version. RTX 64 has the same editions for its runtimes. So we have everything from a solo edition, which means you have one real-time processor. It goes up to two, all the way up to 63 real-time processors. So you can truly tailor the version of the RTX 64 runtime you need 
for your runtime needs. And again, 64, RTX 64 requires two or more cores as this product does not support the shared mode that you might have seen in our 32-bit version. In the past couple minutes, we've gone over an architectural overview as well as some of the high-level features of RTX 64. In order to help you get started and to get you successful quickly, we've put together two videos to get you started. The first one is going to go over how to install and set up RTX 64. So we'll get into some of the basics and really just get you up and running all the way from downloading to just configuring the system and get you ready for development. The second video will be for RTX customers who need to do some networking. So in this one, we're going to go over configuring a network interface card under RTX 64 and how to do that process and to get it up and running. I highly encourage you to take a look at these videos to get you started, and, and hopefully I'll see you soon, and thanks for tuning in.